if you talk about comics, you have to talk about newspapers. It's a media that's in decline or transformation. Your parents probably don't read newspapers as much as they did 20 years ago. Maybe you don't at all. But after the Civil War in the late 19th century in America, you started getting steam presses able to produce uh, in great number papers. You get public education, there's more people reading, and immigration, people coming in mostly from Europe and having to be socialized in the schools and through the media, the newspapers. You had fine illustration in those papers, sometimes decorative um, text. decorative lettering, uh, also weird book illustration like Aubrey Beardsley in England. So these things were coming together about 1890s uh, and finally resulted in the beginning of the comics. Now big newspaper war competition going on in New York City. One publisher thought, hey, I've got this new press that allows me to add color to an illustration. So he had one of his artists come up with Hogan's Alley. And the Yellow Kid, this little Irish-American boy uh, too young to speak, but whose thoughts were printed on his big yellow nightshirt. A lot of the ethnic humor looks kind of crude and insulting to us nowadays, but at least America was trying to take stock of itself in its humor, in its comics. The German-American Katzenjammer kids, um, country people, uh, her, her name was Maud, about a donkey. Uh, on a farm, uh, you had city types, small town types like Mud and Jeff, nobody was ever sure what they did. Even a rich kid uh, kept inside most of the time, Buster Brown. Windsor McKay, very fine newspaper artist, came up with first Little Nemo in Slumberland. and dreams of a rarebit fiend, weird dreams people would have after eating cheese he bred before bed. And he also um, was supposedly on a dare, came up with the first animated film, Gertie the Dinosaur. You started getting some funny animal comics, like Crazy Cat by George Harriman, a Creole or light-skinned black man originally from New Orleans that had some of the jazzy improvisation uh, that he might have brought with him from there. You had Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck springing out from the animated cartoons of the late 20s and 30s. Donald Duck drawn by Carl Barks for many years.
a newly wealthy Irish couple in the 1920s, Jiggs and Maggie, um, had her wanting to be as socially correct as possible, whereas he just wanted to hang out and drink with his old friends. As more Americans were getting automobiles, made affordable in no small part by Henry Ford of Michigan, uh, there came Gasoline Halley, which began uh, with the troubles people had with their cars. It was a prosperous time in the 20s, and women were moving into the workforce. That's when Blondie began. Uh, also, Tilly the Toiler, a woman working in an office. Uh, Betty Boop, an entertainer. Uh, and then in the 1930s, in the hard times, you got little orphan Annie, uh, who was an orphan adopted by a millionaire. Some of these comics ran in the newspapers for many, many years. I remember as a kid in the 60s seeing Boarding House with Major Hoople and Out Our Way and thinking, what are these? This is a very different world. Also in the 30s, you started getting adventure strips. And those were collected in comic books, bringing us up to just about the time of World War II. So somebody could get an art history paper out of how the comics of the early 20th century influenced the fine arts. There was an opera done about Crazy Cat. Uh, you could argue that Comics and newspapers influenced uh, literary forms of the time, the kind of chopped up poetry of T.S. Eliot or the novel of James Joyce. This, there's an apocryphal story that when Pablo Picasso met the American Gertrude Stein in Paris, he said, an American? Can you get me some of those American comic strips?